We have Um... Keep going. Just the refrain.
Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and
please be seated for the reading. The Word of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God had given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and thy cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. The response, please read responsively by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. Sit with grief and my ears to silence. My strength fails me. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me and they plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who thought he was the, in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of, the, of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Prepare the way of the 
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. She broke open the jar and poured, poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor, and they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. 
And he said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters, for it is written. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be always accept to you, acceptable to you, O Lord our God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning on this Palm Sunday. Is that next? Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of, of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he, came, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived, and with him there was a crowd 
with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the, in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests. The elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now, the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will, I will not destroy this temple that is made with hands. hands. And in three days, I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What it is that they testify against you? He was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him. As deserving death. Some began to spit upon him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy. The guards also took him over and beat him. <clears throat> While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, But Peter denied it, saying, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I do not know or understand what you're talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly one of them. For you are a Galilee. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you're talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. And Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? 
He answered him. You say so. Then the chief priests arrested, accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again. Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, he was accustomed to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then Pilate answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him released, to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Which one? And Pilate, Pilate asked, asked them. Uh, why? What evil has he done? Because, excuse me, but they shouted all the same, all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him to the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him king of the jews they struck his head with a reed spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him after mocking him they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him again then they led him out to crucify him they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross it was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothing among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right, and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, ah, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He, save others. he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross. He may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted Jesus. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a, low, with a loud voice. Hello, he Elohi Lima Sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, 
And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way, he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance, among them Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, the younger, and of Joseph and Solomon. They used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When the evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of J Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Crucified and risen one, by your passion you sustain us when we fall, knee bent into the radical emptiness of bone wasting sorrow, sorry, and despair. Teach us to sustain the weary and awaken us to attend to those who suffer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today is a day of contrasts, and an additional contrast that I hadn't expected was my departure from the service leaflet during the time of the gospel. This is indeed a time of contrasts. For me personally, uh, I am absolutely overwhelmed with both joy and humility to be moving into St. John's Rectory. And I'm also feeling some anguish as I open boxes that had been poorly wrapped and discover um, keepsakes of my beloved grandmother just shattered into smithereens. Um, so holding both simultaneously, joy, humility, and sadness. And those are the feelings that I bring with me and invite you to bring yourselves to our worship this Holy Week. While today we read together the Passion Gospel, um, that captures both the triumphant ride, understated triumphant ride of Jesus on a colt into Jerusalem, it's important to realize and remember that Jesus was entering Jerusalem from the east on a colt. At the same time, the emperor was entering Jerusalem from the west in all of his splendor with armed guards around him, horses decorated, spears and flags flying in the breeze. And so holding those two simultaneously is 
I offer as a helpful image to hold all of the experiences you will have this week as we move from Palm Sunday into Holy, into Bondi Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, then to emerge triumphant and joyful on Easter morning. So all of these emotions are present and foreshadowed in today's liturgy. And I ask you to think of your own lives. Think of your own lives where you might be right now, acknowledging and embracing both the sorrow and sadness, as well as hope and joy. And I invite you to think of this faith community like every other Christian faith community in this country and in the world that is preparing hearts and minds and souls to enter into Holy Week and standing on this threshold of Palm Sunday. We all know that there are challenges here at St. John's and things we might be called to let go of and at the same time, emerging hope and hopefulness in what God holds for this community in the future. And just like Jesus and his followers marched steadfastly into Jerusalem for the east, from the east, think of that metaphor as, as our own experience in St. John's of marching faithfully, slowly, and with a direction in sight of enlivening, growing, and deepening the faith and ties in history that you have all known and experienced or inherited from those who came before you. And yes, there are moments that feel like too much change, and moments where change may be welcome. And it is my prayer and a prayer that I offer for the whole congregation that we move together despite concerns and hope and conflicting hopes and fears and anxiety and trust in the wisdom of this congregation and the wisdom of the one who calls us to move forward, move forward from discomfort, move forward from the conflicting emotions that are summed up in Palm Sunday, move forward through the sorrow and the emptiness that comes from Monday Thursday into Good Friday and certainly characterizes Holy Saturday when our worship will consist of about 20 minutes of prayer, no music since Maundy Thursday, from Maundy Thursday on, but dwelling fully, internally, externally in God's presence, absorbing all that God has to show us and how God leads us into the future, which includes, in this liturgical week, of approaching the tomb and waiting by the tomb, not knowing what might emerge. But Easter morning will occur here, and Easter morning will occur year after year here. And just like the faithful women who waited and explored and announced Jesus' resurrection, we will be invited to do the same on Easter Sunday. So I offer you the invitation to think of this week as a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage from the past, which includes a variety of experiences and emotions, and faithfully moving in pilgrimage towards Easter Sunday, which includes, of course, Good Friday. And my deep prayer is that all of us may experience the richness and the fullness of Holy Week and be transformed individually 
relationally and as a community and celebrate Easter morning with resounding alleluias. Amen. The prayers of the people. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken our church to new pro proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, quiet the earth that where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek liberation from the oppressed. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison and to those who face execution. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded. Comfort the dying. Bring peace to those who, those suffering chronic or terminal illnesses. Tend to all who cry out for relief. We pray especially for those in our prayer list and those whom we remember now, either silently or aloud. Jane, Jean, Shania, Dolores, Sheila, Leonard, Laura, Bob, Jennifer, Mary, Sylvia, Robin, Jeffrey, and Barbara. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, we pray that all who will prepare and lead worship in this holy week in all things show us the ways that that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us up to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ our resurrection, and our hope. Hear us, O oh God. We yearn for the fulfillment of God's desire beyond the brokenness and neediness of this life. We offer thanksgiving for God's presence with us and petitions for the transformation of the church and the world. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Praying together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all good goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. First of all, I want to welcome all of you to our celebration of Palm Sunday today. And if there is anyone among us this morning who has not worshiped with us before, I want to stress now, as I will in the communion service, that all are welcome to this table. And if you're not comfortable receiving bread and wine, we invite you to please cross your arms over your chest and we will offer you a prayer or special blessing. The other announcement I want to make to dispel confusion, the soup supper and study will meet this Wednesday and I understand that many among us will be going um, to see sound and light um, and light and sound. Sight and sound, thank you, thank you. And for the remnant of us who remain behind, we will meet um, as a small group in Bain Hall for soup, supper, and study. Hello, um, good morning. Put this here. So for announcements, um, the vestry left, I'm sorry, met last weekend um, and last Sunday after church. And so just some recap from our meeting. Um, we did we did um, vote in Miss. All right. Um, so we did vote in Miss Faith Chisholm as a vestry member in Robbie's place. So here is your pin, Miss Faith. And then um, we also elected in, uh, well, Miss Karen Chapman is already a member of the vestry, but we elected her as our junior warden. So thank you ladies both for stepping up for our church. We appreciate you. Um, and then so also we decided, I know I made an announcement for uh, cleanup days, for outside spring cleanup days, and we had to make some adjustments. So the first one, our actual cleanup day will still be April 7th. So please mark your calendars for April 7th. Uh, we just made a change to the like weather or rain delay day, um, and that will be on the 21st because our next vestry meeting will be on the 14th at noon. Uh, so again, everyone is welcome. Uh, and then for the seventh, if you have any tools or gloves because, and you're planning to come, because we do have what we believe is poison oak or poison ivy of some kind. So you may want to, if you're gonna participate in the bed cleaning, wear some long sleeves. I know some people, are not allergic. I am not that person. So I have to wear long sleeves and gloves. Um, and then also if you happen to have um, 
any bulbs that have gone out of control. I know I myself last weekend dug up half of my, what are those things called? Hostas, hostas. I dug up half of my hostas because um, they multiply and go out of control and we'll be donating them to the church. So if you have anything like that that you can do to help us kind of save in areas, then that would be great as well. Um, so those were my announcements. So again, uh, next vestry meeting is going to be the 14th at noon. And then our cleanup days will be the real one will hopefully be the 7th of April. And then um, if there's inclement weather, we will do the 21st. And then, of course, I have eggs which are $5, a dollar goes back to the church, and you wouldn't even have to dye them for Easter because they come in multiple colors. Oh, okay, and then I didn't know if Miss Faith or Miss Kathy were gonna come up, but um, Easter Sunday, we have an Easter egg hunt, which is also going to be a potluck, and everyone is invited. All children, please tell your neighbors, your friends, your aunties, your uncles, your your grandma, whoever, tell everyone, all are welcome. And I said it was a potluck. Please bring a meal for the potluck. Potluck means bring something. That's the definition of a potluck. It doesn't work unless everyone brings something. Thank you. Last Sunday, I brought my long, heavy, full overcoat, dark, heavy blue. I put it in the uh, George Washington for two over the corner. Uh, when I went home, I took someone else's coat that was there, which was a black coat. And I didn't realize until this morning that this was not my coat that I had taken home. So I brought it back and I put it back in the Washington too, where it was when I put it home. I perhaps called one of the my name blue bull coat, but it discovered that it's not this. Uh, if you want to take back, I'm the person to get in touch with. But the coat that you didn't get last Sunday is back where it was. And get in touch with you to start bringing it over there. Thank you. Good morning. Marie asked me to announce that we still need signups for coffee hour, please. You don't have to make this a huge production. We're not expecting Martha Stewart. So simple is good, simple works. Okay, and the other thing is that the Easter egg hunt next week starts at 11. Good morning. Um, I'd like to welcome our guest, organist this morning. His name is Edmund St. John, who is with us this morning. Let's welcome him. <laughs> he will also be with us on Easter Sunday. So please talk to him, get to know him a little bit. He's an excellent musician. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring praises and come into his courts with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth and out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, how to be thy name, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Christ, the bread of heaven. Be the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Oops. Kenzie, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Be the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Bake the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Nicaea, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Erica, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The jelly, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Karen, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 
John, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. George, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Mike, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Charles, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Jana, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Peter, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Kathy, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Johnny, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Carolyn, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. To Haven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Roxanne, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Marty, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Valencia, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Paul, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Feel free to eat that. Please stand as you are able. Praying together. Oh, thank you. Praying together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food sacrament of his body and blood and is now into the world in peace the love is almighty god we pray you graciously to hold this your family for whom our lord jesus christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and who suffered death upon the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
trust in me. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.